you already know, OG is calling that, man. Yeah, I was too tired. LMG niggas is never outside. He's up. Oh. Since in or around 2018, the Drug Enforcement Administration DEA, and the New York City Police Department have been investigating a violent criminal organization known as the Mac Bowlers. The Mac Bowlers are a subset of the larger Blood Street Gang, specifically, the Brims branch of the Bloods. While a subset itself, the Mac Bowlers organization has nevertheless been split into smaller branches that control various neighborhoods in New York City and the Bronx. This particular investigation focused on the Mac Bowlers branch that has been operating in and around the Bronx within the confines of the 40th Precinct since approximately 2011. This branch of the Mac Bowlers centered their operations within the Melrose and Jackson housing projects and around Kirtland Avenue. The Mac Bowlers branch from the Melrose and Jackson houses is primarily comprised of members and associates of several, smaller, local Bronx Street gangs, including the Kirtland Avenue crew, CAC, God's Favorite Children, GFC, the L's, Six Wild, and the OG's. Despite the fact that many of its members belong to smaller neighborhood gangs, the Mac Bowlers have operated as a single organization since 2011 and controlled territory as a single unit rather than divided amongst the local gangs. Within the gang's territory, members and associates of the Mac Bowlers sold various narcotics, including crack cocaine, heroin, and marijuana. Members pooled their narcotics profits and used them to purchase additional amounts of narcotics as well as firearms that were used to commit, among other things, murders, shootings, and robberies. Indeed, this branch of the Mac Bowlers sought to exercise control over its territory and to assert dominance over rival gangs, in particular, the young gun Nazar YGs, who operated in an area near Mac Bowlers' territory. The Mac Bowlers and the YGs have been locked in an increasingly violent dispute since in or about 2011. The beef resulted in several acts of violence, including several shootings and murders, all of which were aimed at protecting Mac Bowlers territory from encroachment by YGs, intimidating YGs, retaliating against YGs who struck against Mac Bowlers, and generally increasing the Mac Bowlers reputation in the streets, and individual Mac Bowlers reputations within the gang itself. In connection with this rivalry, Mac Bowler's members and associates maintained and shared firearms, which were often used to attack rival members of the YGs. These shared firearms were kept in several stash locations known to certain Mac Bowler's members and associates. Whenever Mac Bowler's needed firearms, they could, and did, obtain and use the gang's shared firearms. We are going back to the beginning, the OGs, Kirtland Avenue. We did a short piece on Melly Mel Bowler, now, let's cover the other players. Sean, aka, S. Dot, was a member of the Mac Bowlers. Since young, he had witnessed violence in the neighborhood. These problems worsened as S. Dot aged, and he stopped going to school when he was 14. S. Dot found some belonging, by hanging out on the street and associating with gang members. He was actively pursuing this lifestyle in his late teens. As a result, in 2009, he was arrested for and pleaded guilty to attempted criminal possession of a weapon in the second degree. He was sentenced to one year of imprisonment. In 2010, S. Dot was arrested for robbery in the third degree. Tosh Bowler is a ranking member of the Mac Bowlers. At age 15, he was arrested and adjudicated a youthful offender for robbery and detained for one year at Brookwood Secure Center, a juvenile detention center in upstate New York. At age 17, he pled guilty to attempted criminal possession of a weapon and sentenced to one year at Rikers. On December 12, 2010, Tosh was a victim of a gang-related shooting. That evening, Tosh was shot at near the intersection of 155th and Cortland Avenue. Then, just over a month later, during the evening of January 24, 2011, Tosh Baller and other members of GFC were hanging out on Cortland Avenue. Suddenly, they were chased by YG members, Tall J, Oe, Black, Doty and others. Tosh and his associates barricaded themselves in the back room of a nearby deli. After Tosh and his GFC colleagues sought refuge in the deli, Daiki Metheridge was murdered outside. 
The following day, at approximately 1.40 p.m., three members of the 44th Precinct's anti-crime unit, officers Puente and Andujar, and Sergeant Diaz, were driving north on Concourse Village West in an unmarked police vehicle. Officer Andujar was driving slowly, approximately 5 miles per hour or less. Officer Puente and Sergeant Diaz saw Tosh and his cousin Javon, standing on the sidewalk engaged in conversation. Sergeant Diaz, who was seated in the rear passenger side of the car, allegedly saw Tosh show the brown butt of a gun to Javon. Tosh was holding the gun near his waistband. Officer Puente, seated in the front passenger seat, also saw the brown handle of a large gun tucked into Tosh's waistband. Officer Puente told Officer Andujar to stop the car and all three officers then exited the vehicle yelling police, don't move, stop. After the officers identified themselves, Tosh began to run, and officers Puente and Andujar gave chase. Tosh ran up a ramp leading into the courtyard of an apartment building complex. Officer Puente lost sight of Tosh for about two to five seconds as Tosh turned up the ramp. While chasing Tosh, Officer Puente had his weapon drawn and was saying police, stop. In the courtyard, Tosh threw himself on the ground and placed his hands behind his back. Officer Puente did a visual inspection of Tosh and the surrounding area, but did not recover a gun. Officer Puente then escorted Tosh back to the sidewalk along the same path Tosh had run, looking for a gun. While officers Puente and Andujar chased Tosh, Sergeant Diaz remained on the sidewalk with Javon, who did not attempt to flee. Sergeant Diaz asked Javon for his name, date of birth, and address. When officers Puente and Andujar returned to the sidewalk with Tosh, Sergeant Diaz instructed Officer Puente to remain with Tosh and Javon while he and Officer Andujar canvassed the area for a gun. While searching, Sergeant Diaz observed a brown object in a pile of snow at the top of the ramp next to a garbage can. Sergeant Diaz retrieved the object, which he discovered was a revolver loaded with six rounds of ammunition. Sergeant Diaz then instructed officers Puente and Andujar to place Tosh and Javon under arrest, and they were then handcuffed. The arrest occurred at approximately 1.45 in the afternoon. After arriving at the 44th Precinct, Officer Puente placed Tosh and Javon in separate holding cells, as is required in connection with a gun arrest. Tosh claims that while he was in the holding cell, Officer Puente again repeatedly asked him whether he was going to let Javon go down for the gun. When Officer Puente gave Tosh his cell phone so that he could call his mother, Tosh alleges that Officer Puente asked Tosh if he had come to a conclusion about the gun. Tosh claims that in response to Officer Puente's questioning, he admitted that the gun was his. Tosh was subsequently interviewed by different detective and agents. Tosh stated that he ran from the police because he had a gun, which he threw into the snow by some garbage before the police apprehended him. Tosh told both Detective Mayfield and Agent Castillo that he had obtained the gun in October or November 2010. While attending a party in Harlem, he saw two young kids playing with a gun and took the firearm away from them. Tosh said that he kept the gun at his aunt's house until the gang attack and homicide on January 24, 2011. Tosh began carrying the gun the next day for protection. Eventually, he was sentenced to 60 months imprisonment. This next situation was more of an internal dispute. So, DeAndre, aka D-Nice, joined the Mac Bowlers in 2011. In 2007, he was adjudicated a juvenile delinquent and was detained for 18 months at Glen Mill School, a residential facility in Pennsylvania. He and his family moved out there in hopes of a better life and to escape the harsh realities of the Bronx. Although he was in PA, still, he would go back to the Bronx when he had free time. In 2011, shortly after the Pennsylvania stink, he and his brother, Suki, were sent back to the Bronx to care for their aunt, who was ill. Danny Delgado was an older dude that stayed in the area and had recently came home from a 20-year bid. On August 1, 2011, Nathaniel, aka Juntao, was approached by Delgado. To some degree, Delgado basically pressed Juntao in front of everyone present and told Juntao to stop flirting with his girlfriend. Juntao felt disrespected, but allowed Delgado to walk away. The same night, Juntao approached D-Nice and asked him to go shoot Delgado. During this time, D-Nice was only an associate of the Mac Bowlers, but most who repped OGs were becoming or attempting to be Mac Bowler at this time. Anyway, D-Nice agreed to commit the murder, which was a means for him to gain heightened status among the Mac Bowlers. 
So, Dean Nice walked to Delgado's residence, in the vicinity of 281 East 153rd Street in the Bronx. Upon arriving outside the building, Dean Nice found Delgado getting into a car with other people. He walked up to Delgado and opened fire, shooting Delgado three times in the right side of his body. After hitting his target, Dean Nice fled the scene on foot. Delgado died from his injuries later that night. A few days later, on or about August 10, 2011, Dean Nice was arrested by the New York Police Department and charged by the Bronx District Attorney's Office with Delgado's murder. At the time, he weighed around 120 pounds and could not survive in Rikers without gang affiliation. He then became a Mac Bowler. On September 15, 2011, Jose Webster, 15, was shot to death on Teller Avenue on 168th Street. It happened a few blocks away from his home in the Daniel Webster houses and two weeks before his 16th birthday. Jose Webster, aka Spiltz, was YG. Around 8.50 p.m., Jose was walking his girlfriend home when two men approached them and picked a fight with them. One of the assailants fatally shot him in the chest. A witness said his girlfriend at his time leaned over his body and begged him not to leave her while he lay on the ground trying to breathe. Allegedly, Juntao was responsible for the murder. That rivalry escalated in April 16, 2012, after several YG gang members, such as Ann Flocka and Rel, got drunk and began arguing among themselves about who put in more work. So, they went to OG's territory, the Melrose Housing Projects, to settle their dispute. Upon arriving at the Melrose Projects, members of the YG saw Noah and attacked him. During the attack, Noah's skull was fractured in several places. The group left Laura to die. Following the stomping, they bragged to fellow YGs about what they had done. After the murder, Mac Bowler's gang members retaliated against the YGs in multiple shootings. Navin, aka Dollars, was a Mac Bowler gang member. In or about April or May 2012, Dollars aided and abetted a shooting committed by a co conspirator in the vicinity of the Patterson houses in the Bronx. No one was hit. On or about December 27, 2012, Dollars shot at two rival gang members who disrespected one of Dollars' family members. No one was hit in this situation either. S. Dodd, who we spoke about earlier and was in jail for the robbery, was paroled in May 2013. His sentence was reduced, which allowed him to be home for this next situation. On July 27, Mac Bowlers, S. Dodd, Dwayne, Chuck, Dollars, and others had murder on their mind. They traveled to the vicinity of 338 East 145th Street, rival territory, where they shot someone in the ankle. Dwayne acted as a holster, somebody to hold a gun, but the gun he brought was not used. Chuck supplied S. Dot with a gun used for the shooting. Dollars also brandished a gun during the shooting. Dollars was on probation after being arrested for a 38 caliber revolver this day. Jafari, aka JJ, was another Mac Bowler and has been since at least 2011. As a member of the Mac Bowler, Dollars sold crack cocaine, heroin, and marijuana within the gang's territory. During the period within which he sold narcotics, he was personally responsible for distributing at least 196 grams of crack cocaine. JJ also carried a firearm to protect his narcotics and the gang's narcotics territory and to commit several acts of violence. For example, on or about October 4, 2013, JJ and several other members of the Mac Bowler contacted a local marijuana dealer purportedly to set up a marijuana transaction. JJ, however, actually intended to rob the marijuana dealer. To that end, he obtained from his apartment a 32 caliber handgun and met with a dealer in the vicinity of 700 Morris Avenue and 153rd Street in the Bronx. There, JJ brandished a firearm, and he and his fellow Mac Bowler robbed the dealer. During the robbery, JJ shot the dealer in the leg. On October 30, 2013, Dollars was arrested, along with several other Mac Bowler, after one of the gang members was caught with a loaded 32 caliber firearm. Keith, aka Keefe, was a violent member of the Mac Bowlers. On November 15, 2013, Keefe shot two people in the Moorhouses, in retaliation for the death of Noah, a fellow Mac Bowler from Cortland Avenue. He learned that one of the YG dudes involved in Laura's death was hanging out in the Moorhouses, because someone from the Moorhouses posted a picture of the individual on Facebook. He then went to the Moorhouses to shoot the person who posted the picture, because he was upset that the individual had been permitted to hang out in the Moorhouses. During the attack, two individuals who were not the intended targets of the shooting were injured. 
One victim was shot in the leg, and another victim was shot in the face, on his left cheek. Both victims were treated for gunshot wounds at the emergency room. June, 2014, Suki, brother of Dean Nice, attempted to murder individuals at the Dykeman Houses, 3784 10th Avenue. A little over a week later, on June 26 that year, Dollars was the shooter in a shooting that occurred while he was on probation. This next situation was a Mac on Mac beef. So, back to Dean Nice. Dean Nice was acquitted for the 2011 Delgado murder on February 17, 2015. While he was detained between 2011 and 2015, Dean Nice became a member of the Mac Bowlers and continued to commit acts of violence as part of his gang membership. His execution of Delgado helped him achieve a stronger reputation and status within the gang. While detained on Rikers Island, Dean Nice participated in at least two assaults on other inmates, including one instance in which Dean Nice slashed another inmate across the face with a sharpened object. Following his acquittal and release from jail, Dean Nice continued his affiliation with the Mac Bowler. During his brief time in the community in the summer of 2015, Dean Nice resumed selling crack cocaine with other Mac Bowler members and carried a handgun on his person. On June 14, 2015, Chuck was involved in the planning and execution Dean Nice. Come to find out, the man Dean Nice killed, Delgado, was actually Chuck's uncle. As a result, Chuck was teased and disrespected by other Mac Bowler members and associates for not getting back, in part, to avenge his uncle and in part to improve his reputation among the Mac Bowlers, he planned with at least one other individual for Dean Nice to be shot. Chuck and another individual confronted Dean Nice at a cookout, during which they engaged in a shootout. Dean Nice was able to up his gun, but the individual who Chuck came with was faster with it, resulting in Dean Nice receiving a gunshot wound to the chest. He survived, but was back in jail after these 10 days of freedom. He would go on to become a known serial slasher in the jails. On June 16, 2017, Tosh Bowler shot at and attempted to murder a rival IGS gang member named Boo Harvey, near the intersection of 158th and Park Avenue in the Bronx. He shot at Boo Harvey because Harvey had been observed in an area controlled by the Mac Bowler, which was perceived by Mac Bowler members as a slight. While the defendant target Harvey, he hit an individual named Isaiah Sparks in the leg. Law enforcement officers recovered from the scene approximately five 357 caliber shell casings and surveillance video recorded in the area. The surveillance video, which was captured moments before the shooting, showed the defendant, Boo Harvey, and Isaiah Sparks on Park Avenue with several other individuals. The defendant could be seen wearing a royal blue hooded sweatshirt and distinctive black and white pants. Additionally, the defendant's face was clearly visible at times. Moreover, the defendant posted several rap videos on YouTube, in which he references cooperators and cooperating with the government more generally. For example, one song, titled Should Have Neva Told, references several federal cooperators by name. In that same song, the defendant raps about feeding cooperating witnesses with a Beretta, meaning he intended to shoot them. The defendant was arrested on June 27, 2018, and has been detained since that date. On July 9, 2017, Keefe shot three people in the vicinity of 1168 Clay Avenue in the Bronx. While at a memorial cookout for fallen Mac Bowler member T Money, Keefe believed that he had been disrespected by another member of the Mac Bowler, who accused the defendant of running away from members of the YGs. He left the cookout and returned shortly thereafter with a gun. Keefe then shot the Mac Bowler who made the accusation and two other individuals, before fleeing the scene. Police officers who responded to the scene of the shooting observed two males on the street with gunshot wounds. Officers were subsequently notified that a third shooting victim had recently checked himself into Bronx, Lebanon with a gunshot wound to the face suffered at the same location. Between approximately 2012 and 2018, Xavier Holman was a member of the Mac Bowler who also associated with an allied local street gang known as Six Wild. As part of his membership in the gang, the defendant sold marijuana. The defendant also promoted the gang on social media by, for example, referring to himself as Rico Bowler, and thereby declaring his membership in the Mac Bowlers. He had already done time for robberies in 2010 and 2014. He came home in 2015 and was able to get a construction job. At some point, Rico felt disrespected by a drug dealer who became romantically involved with the defendant's ex-girlfriend and who insulted Rico's mother, as she was what people call a crackhead. 
On January 12, 2018, Rico responded to this combination of insults by firing a 9mm handgun three times into the rival drug dealer's door, thereby ensuring that Rico's fellow gang members would respect him and that his rivals would know not to cross him. He was arrested on January 22, 2018 and has been detained since that date. Between approximately 2015 and 2018, Keenan was an associate of the Mac Bowlers who sold marijuana in the gang's territory. In order to protect his drugs, proceeds, and territory from rivals, the defendant possessed firearms. On April 30, 2018, Keenan discharged five shots from a Luger 9mm at a rival gang member in the vicinity of 384 East 154th Street in the Bronx. Although no one was injured, the shooting took place in broad daylight. So, this about wraps it up. Other than these events, drug sales to undercover cops or robberies, we are pretty much done with this timeline. In all, this indictment charged more or less 20 members and associates of the Mac Bowlers with racketeering, narcotics trafficking, robbery, and firearms offenses. This was the story of the Mac Bowlers, the OGs from Courtland Avenue. Remember stay low, and thanks for watching.